Hey guys, Anthony Medico, E Squared founder and CEO. I wanted to thank anyone who came out to the Chicago Memorial Day rally yesterday on Memorial Day, Monday, May 25th, in Buckingham Fountain, downtown Chicago. Uh, one of the reasons that we started this journey, started this rally, was to first of all pay tribute to the 1.4 million soldiers who died for the freedom, for America, for the Constitution, which is the fabric of our rights. Um, we exercised yesterday the First Amendment, freedom of speech, right to assemble, uh, freedom of religion, right to express grievance to the government, which is all which is all guaranteed rights in the First Amendment. And we put it to test in Chicago for a reason, because Chicago has had the strictest lockdown measures. I mean, honestly, the whole country uh, uh, over the last two to three months, over 333 million citizens have had their constitutional rights restricted and violated based on the fear of this virus pandemic. Um, I want to let you guys know we had a great lineup of speakers yesterday that the press never covered because they didn't want you to know who was speaking. We had, uh, there's somebody I got to just look at here again. We had Brian Gibson, the pastor who's been responsible for opening up churches across America and expressing, you know, his his passion and his uh, leadership to, to really uh, open up the churches. It's a right to people to go to church, freedom of religion. It's guaranteed by the Constitution. We had constitutional lawyer, expert and podcast uh, speaker Rick Green. We had politicians like Representative Darren Bailey, Republican here in the state of Illinois. We have Stephen Moore, economic advisor to the White House, uh, author of Trumponomics. We had Democrats. We had uh, Representative Vernon Jones from Georgia fly in 24 hour notice because he feels strongly about the restriction of constitutional rights um, during a virus pandemic. In fact, his mom died in a nursing home. Uh, and he was almost not, not able to see her uh, prior uh, at the very end of her death. And some of his siblings weren't due to the fear and the strict lockdown measures of the virus pandemic. So he had a personal stake in this uh, situation. Uh, we had Eric Wynn, Purple Heart recipient, Bronze Star recipient, and yeah, Michael Gerber, author of the E Myth, and many more. So great speakers. Um, you never heard that story in any of the local press, not even the national press, about those speakers. They didn't cover the speakers. Um, I felt, uh, first of all, the, the rally was great. We actually went an hour over. You know, it started from it was supposed to go from noon to 2 p.m. We actually closed down about 3 p.m. because we had so many speakers that wanted to stand up and say what they wanted to say and, and exercise free speech. Um, there's been some false articles that the mayor had us shut down, that the mayor had us disperse, that the police dispersed us. The police put out a false press report that they dispersed us. They did not disperse us. I was in charge of that organization rally. Um, I met with that commander. Oh, let me tell you what happened. The truth is that commander called me five days before the event and acted like my best friend and told me we could set up the PA system that we had planned. We had an elaborate PA system um, of speakers and sound that so people could practice social distance in Buckingham Fountain and not have to crowd together to hear someone speak. Um, I told him what we were doing. He okayed it. Um, at 8 a.m. on Monday, May 25th, um, our audiovisual team same company that sets up Lollapalooza concerts, put in a stage, a podium, speakers, so that folks could sit six feet apart if they wanted to and practice social distance while hearing the message of free speech of many American citizens, politicians, and military veterans who serve their country. What happened was a violation of our free speech, and after they told us we could set it up, they had it all torn down. Now on the side, one of the, uh, the commander told one of my, one of my uh, managers there at the rally that he initially did approve it and was in support of it, but this was coming from higher up. And they told him to take our ability to speak down and away from us, violation of free speech. So we resorted to bullhorns. You know, they weren't the best, they weren't the best, but you guys, you guys weren't there, no, uh, it was hard to hear. And uh, we had to pick them up from Walmart. Where'd we get them guys, Walmart, Home Depot? Yeah, Harbor Freight. Walmart at the last minute to allow these people to speak. And even then with these, with these uh, mega horns, you know, they weren't the best quality. Um, people had to crowd in. You had 500 people crowding in to hear the speaker. So when you hear in the news that we weren't practicing social distance, the city forced us in a position to exercise free speech and not be able to practice social distance. Um, that's a whole other issue. Secondly, they did not disperse us. Our rally was supposed to go until 2 p.m. Uh, about 2.30 p.m., the commander came up to me and asked us, uh, we need to, he, he asked us if we could wind this thing down. I told him, look, we still have three more speakers. We need to let it continue so these people feel like they can come out and exercise free speech. That's what this is all about. Uh, he reminded me that we were over. And I said we would try to wrap it up as soon as possible. We did not disperse. We, in fact, we continued until about 3 o'clock. So the rally didn't actually end until 3. It was supposed to end at 2. Now, the police did line up at least 100, maybe 150 
uh, well uniformed uh, police uh, Chicago police officers on bikes or some on horseback. Um, it was kind of scary because they were starting to form a, uh, a circle, but they did not move forward and we stood our ground. And in fact, if anything, that commander stood down. He stood down. And uh, I reminded him that there's a lot of veterans in that audience. There were Purple Heart recipients speaking. And, they, and those folks gave their, you know, were willing to give their lives. A lot of their buddies lost their lives for the ability to stand there in Buckingham Fowl and say what they want to say. And I reminded him of that, and he stood down. And I think he knew it wouldn't look good, even, even though the mayor probably wanted him to disperse us. And she alluded to that, that she dispersed us in some of her tweets. It's absolutely fake news. And we're going to be putting together some press release later this week. And we have all the video footage to cover what really happened there, including the commander and his police force standing down, not dispersing us. And we're going to get the truth out, guys. So I don't want to focus on that too much. I want to focus on the fact that we had a great lineup of speakers. We put to test the American Constitution, which is the First Amendment, which is exactly what those soldiers died for. So when you should think about Memorial Day, out of all days in the entire calendar year, that you should be able to put the First Amendment to test. And that would be Memorial Day, because that's exactly what 1.4 million soldiers died for. We put it to test, downtown Chicago and Grant Park, right in the strictest lockdown area, probably one of the strictest in the country. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the First Amendment won, we prevailed, we documented it. It's gonna be part of our upcoming uh, documentary, Unconstitutional, which as some of you guys know, started in Arizona at a rally. And we moved up through, back going to Sprinter right now, you can see who's driving, uh, heading back, uh, heading back home. Uh, but this, this, this journey started in Arizona, went through all of America, heart of America, to capture the stories of small business owners, citizens, Democrats, Republicans, politicians, nurses, doctors, um, to get the stories of uh, folks on the streets and how the virus pandemic, really the unconstitutional lockdown of America has affected their lives. Because mainstream media is pushing their talking points and their political points back and forth and what's right, what's wrong. The virus assumptions have changed at least 10 times. The projections have changed. Half the medical experts now are saying you should wear a mask. Half them are saying the mask is, is uh, actually can make you sicker or, or uh, it's, not, it's not something you should be doing. And so a lot of folks are confused and we're getting to the bottom of it. We're also gonna be revealing this documentary, the players, the financial, who's benefiting from this thing, from the state government level, who are getting access to federal funding when they have a lockdown. They're getting a lot more money from the federal government when they have a lockdown. Happens to be a lot of the blue states, but I don't wanna turn this into a political thing. I'm gonna reveal it for what it is. Cause I think both parties are wrong. I think the federal government was wrong to, to, to try to buy uh, you know, the American people to stay shut up and locked at home, to zip their lips, to force, force them into unemployment, to force 40 million into unemployment, and to shutter hundreds of thousands of small business owners against their will is a violation of their constitutional rights. And there's no no amount of money, $3 trillion, $5 trillion. That money was misused. That money could have been channeled to the 1% that this virus is adversely affecting. They could have their own personal doctor, proactive doctor treatment, and everything else, um, instead of violating the rights of 99% of, uh, of Americans, healthy Americans, most of which are not adversely affected by the virus. And they could have really channeled that money and that energy to the 1% in the hospitals and the nursing homes that are taking care of those folks and making sure they have the proper quarantine measures. Instead, they channeled 99% of that money into 99% of healthy America and forced us into a situation where our constitutional rights have been vacated or restricted. Now, I know we're coming out of this. I know a lot of you guys are already out of it or coming out of it. Uh, you're already having beers. Probably we're on Memorial Day. You're probably swimming in pools, public pools. Uh, you're gonna, Americans are forgiving. We all are, me too. One month from now, you're gonna forget that we just gave away our constitutional rights for two to three months, two to three months as American citizens. We're all gonna forget it. But this documentary, which is called Unconstitutional American Story, is gonna never forget it. And we captured every essence on the streets from every walk of life, skin color, political party, doesn't matter. This is not a political documentary. It's an American story. It's called Unconstitutional. We're looking forward to finishing it up. This is the last final scene with Chicago. We got some unbelievable footage. We're gonna show that the local press here and the press that uh, reported what they did was absolutely wrong. And more importantly, we're gonna remind American citizens around the country to never ever give up their constitutional rights in the sake of fear, emergency, state orders, state statutes, city, city orders, anything, because that's what those guys died for and that's exactly what America's all about. See you soon.